This is Dave, and I'm here with Ethan, and together we are Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, episode 169 Inch. On this episode, we catch up on some Weird Al related news and calls from our 347 Spatula Hotline. It's Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast. It's a podcast about Weird Al. It's Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast. Seriously, the whole podcast is about Weird Al. You don't have to listen, but we're glad you are. Welcome to episode 169 inch. Nice. What's nice? Well, we're taking it easy this episode by listening to some 347 spatula hotline calls and catching up on some news. It will be nice. You are right. That does sound really nice. Well, we have a bunch of spatula hotline calls saved up, and we're going to play them later on this episode. But first, it's time for What's Happening in Weird Al Related News! Seriously? I thought it was time for What's Happening in Weird Al Related News! Well, you know the rule. When we hear that sound, we have to listen to the spatula call. Oh, jeez. All right, intern Frank, let's hear this call. Hi, Dave and Ethan. Ajax here. I'm driving home now from the Dayton show at the Schuster Center in lovely Dayton, Ohio. And uh, I was one of those unfortunate ones that bought tickets to a COVID postponed show. So we were really looking forward to this Dayton show. Of course, we had to buy the tickets months after they had went on sale, but it was okay. We had nosebleed seats. Please, I didn't know that I was going to take that literally. I bled from my nose onto my favorite Hawaiian banana shirt. And the bananas aren't Hawaiian, but it's banana shirt. That's a Hawaiian shirt also. But they were still really good. You got to see everything, and it was great. Emo came out and, of course, was amazing and did the Raspberry Jam joke, which is one of the greatest jokes in the history of comedy. So I I, uh, was very appreciative of that. Then Weird Al came out, everybody came out, and uh, it was a little bit different. I didn't really understand what was different until after the first song, Weird Al explained that Bermuda got COVID and had to stay behind in Ashland, Kentucky. And on the kit was Nick Armoroso. So luckily, luckily Bermuda's buddy Nick stepped in uh, just in the nick of time and uh, was able to uh, go on with the show. So he then uh, continued to explain that he, of course, had COVID, had to postpone the shows, got it first. The Jim got it twice and Ruben got it, but, but Steve never got it. So I hope he's okay and I hope Bermuda recovers quickly but uh, what a crazy, crazy thing. He, so Bermuda had to stay back behind in Ashland, Kentucky, their last stop. But the show went on. They said, you know, the show must go on. And thank goodness it did, because uh, I don't know what I would have done. Greedily, don't know what I would have done if I would have were to miss two Weird Al shows that I paid for in a row. But anyway, it was awesome. Thanks for doing what you guys do. And uh, I can't wait to listen to 27 more centimeter episodes. All right, well, I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Ajax, thank you so much for this timely report. We're glad that the concert went well. And boy, I can't believe everything going on in Weird Al land. Yeah, that's crazy that the concert almost didn't happen. Incredible. Wow, you know, this is actually only the second instance that Bermuda had to miss shows. The first and only other time was during the 2003 Poodle Hat Tour where Pete Gallagher sat in on drums for a few shows. Now, we don't know how long Bermuda will be off the tour, but we are very glad to hear that for now, the drums and drumsticks are in Nick's very capable and very talented hands. One thing we definitely are sure of is that from all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al podcast, our hearts go out to you bermuda and hopefully you can leave kentucky soon and we also hope you feel better from the covid19 okay i think it's time we can finally move on to some regularly scheduled weird owl related news Yesterday, August 23rd, the Toronto International Film Festival released their official film schedule for next month's film festival. As we previously reported, Weird, the Al Yankovic story, the biopic starring Daniel Radcliffe as Weird Al, and co-written and directed by our most recent guest, Eric Appel, will make its world premiere on the festival's opening night, Thursday, September 8th. 
Well, don't worry if you cannot make it on opening night, because according to the official film schedule, the film will be played three more times throughout the festival. Now, one of those times is a press and industry showing, but there are two other public screenings, one the following day on Friday, September 9th, and the final showing on September 18th. I've been thinking a lot about Weird, the Al Yankovic story recently. <laughs> well, Dave, you're not alone, uh, but anything specific on your mind? Well, yeah, regarding the film, you know how Weird Al has said that he does a major motion picture every 33 years? Yeah, of course. You know, UHF was released in theaters in 1989, and the current year is 2022. So, yeah, the math checks out. Yeah, except that UHF was released in theaters on July 21st, 1989. So... Technically, 33 years from that date would have been July 21st, 2022. So why is it that we have to wait until November to see Weird the Al Yankovic story? It should be out right now. Sheesh. Well, Dave, you got to remember, leap years. Those probably messed up the timeline by a couple months. Yeah, leap years are confusing. I guess you're right. Well, on Monday's edition of the New York Times, there was an article all about the Roku channel and Weird the Al Yankovic story. Available both in print and online, the article also features a few quotes from Weird Al Yankovic himself. Now, as part of our journey as Weird Al collectors, such big coverage in an article in the New York Times is definitely something Dave and I like to track down for our collections. Yeah, Ethan, I was driving around to several different stores and I couldn't find it anywhere. Were you able to do any better? Well, so I ended up going to eight different stores, but I did eventually find a couple copies. And I gotta tell you, Dave, something pretty crazy happened when I went into one of the stores. Something even crazier than an actual store carrying newspapers in this day and age? <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I suppose so. I, I mean, I was surprised at how many stores told me they no longer carry newspapers. Well, so what happened was I was going to the Hannaford Supermarket in Clifton Park, New York. And as I'm getting out of my car, there's this guy standing in the parking lot and he goes, Hi! And, you know, Dave, I'm a friendly guy. I said, Hi, how's it going? And he said, are you a Weird Al fan? And I said, yes. Yeah, yes, I am. <laughs> and, and, you know, Dave, I wasn't like wearing a Weird Al shirt. I, I was wearing uh, a twine ball shirt and I had my 2000 inch hat. But, you know, neither of those really necessarily scream Weird Al fan unless you yourself are already a big Weird Al fan. So it's like, yeah, I'm a Weird Al fan. And I was kind of confused at how this guy knew. And he goes, hey. Are you from Dave and Ethan's Weird Al podcast? And I was like, <laughs> completely dumbfounded. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And uh, he must have seen uh, the 2000 inch on my hat and made the connection. And he's telling me how he listens to the podcast and he loved, you know, all these different interviews. And he was telling me that he's a big fan and a collector himself. He's got like a bunch of the albums on vinyl. And uh, he was talking about. You know how he loves the the cover on the first album because of Al's messy bedroom, and he liked how you know on our podcast. I think Joel Miller was the one who was talking about you know Al's room was pretty messy, so <laughs> it was pretty amazing. And so his name is Alex, and I had no idea that we had any local listeners around here, Dave, that we weren't aware of. So. Big shout out to my new friend, Alex, and uh, I was really bummed because I didn't have any wooden nickels or stickers with me, Dave, so I did give Alex one of our cards, and I told him to email me so I could mail him uh, some goodies. So, Alex, if you're listening, send me an email or email frank at 2000inch.com, and we'll get you some stickers. Wow, what a crazy story. How awesome was that? But did Hannaford have any newspapers? Uh, they did, but they didn't have any New York Times, but oh. luckily I, I did find one and I grabbed an extra one for you, Dave. Oh, thank you very much. A Weird Al recently shared an image from his upcoming book, The Illustrated Al, The Songs of Weird Al Yankovic, on his social media accounts. The image he shared comes from the song Why Does This Always Happen to Me and was drawn by underground comic legend Peter Bage. It looks pretty stinking majestic. Now, Weird Al will be showing samples from each artist every Monday and Friday for the next four months on his Instagram account, and we cannot wait to see the rest. 
If you have not pre-ordered the book yet, you can do so over at Z2Comics.com or Amazon.com. And in other book-related news, there's a new book coming out on April 25th, 2023 called Comedy Bang Bang, the podcast, the book. The book is edited by our past guest and host of Comedy Bang Bang, Scott Aukerman, and features an introduction by Lin-Manuel Miranda, a preface by Jack Quaid, and a foreword by, uh, gotta pass. But most importantly, it features a rebuttal to the introduction by none other than Weird Al Yankovic. The book is now available for pre-orders over on Amazon.com. In other pre-order news, the trading card company Topps has added a card to their 2022 Topps Garbage Pal Kids We Hate the 80s expansion set that we think fans of Weird Al Yankovic would get a kick out of. Their current set, set number five, include Weird Albert and Yanked Vic cards, which look suspiciously like a certain curly-haired, bespectacled parody musician. If you're interested in picking these cards up for your collection, you gotta act quickly! The set that include these cards are only on sale for a few more hours as the offer expires tomorrow, August 25th. So, if you're interested, head over to tops.com. It appears that Demented Punk Records has once again released yet another vinyl that includes Weird Al's recording of Beat on the Brat. Demented Punk Records has teamed up with Urban Outfitters for what they are calling an exclusive 12-inch red vinyl, including exclusive live bonus tracks by Weird Al and Osaka Popstar. Now, collectors may be wondering, how does that differ from the exclusive 12-inch vinyl that includes exclusive live bonus tracks by Weird Al and Osaka Popstar, which is available on DementedPunk.com? Well, the answer is, we really aren't sure. (laughs) They appear to be the same across the board, including the price. It seems like Demented Punk is, uh, if you'll excuse the pun, beating this song to death. Yeah, let's see. Well, the song was first released on Weird Al's Medium Rarities Cheesy Compilation album as part of the Squeeze Box box set, and it later appeared on Dr. Demento's Covered in Punk album. And Ethan, you'll also remember the three-inch vinyl that came out on Record Store Day back in July 2021, as well as the special black 12-inch vinyl that came out on Black Friday Record Store Day a few months later. And then the exclusive 12-inch red vinyl that then came out on DementedPunk.com, and now maybe a special Urban Outfitters version, too. Well, it's no secret that Weird Al's cover of Beat on the Brat is one of my favorite Weird Al tunes, but I'd like to challenge Demented Punk Records to release anything else featuring Weird Al that does not include Beat on the Brat. And I want to issue my own challenge to them. I'd like them to release it 27 different ways total. You're getting really close. This coming Saturday, August 27th, is a very special anniversary for Weird Al fans. That's right, Dave. This weekend marks the fourth anniversary of Weird Al Yankovic finally receiving his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh my gosh, what an incredible day that was to be in the audience, to be standing there on Hollywood Boulevard, finally seeing Weird Al get the recognition that he deserved. It was so much fun getting to be there with you, Dave, you know, see Al and his family and and the band and, and all the other Weird Al fans. It was just, it was truly, truly an extremely special and important day in Weird Al and Weird Al fan history. And I want to give a huge shout out to Vicky DeVries, Rhymes with Cheese, who teamed up with me as we tirelessly campaigned and raised funds all along until we finally got Weird Al his star. But I gotta tell you, that day was even more pretty stinking majestic than either of us could have possibly imagined. And every time we've gone to visit the star since the ceremony, it still looks as new as that day. I can't believe how incredible all these Weird Al fans and their efforts have been to maintain it so perfectly and so regularly. Yeah, it's definitely worth a trip out there. And for those of you who want to make the pilgrimage to the star or want to visit again, remember that Weird Al's star can be found at 6914 Hollywood Boulevard. That is directly across the street from the Chinese Theater. Be sure to bring Stanley's mop and bucket and get it nice and clean. And for more details, you can always head over to WeirdAlStar.com. And fans of Weird Al also celebrated another milestone anniversary this past weekend. 
August 21st marked the 27th anniversary of the launch of the Bermuda Files, John Bermuda Schwartz's website, which later evolved into what we know now as WeirdAl.com. Wow, has it been 27 years already? I can vividly remember the day that Bermuda first announced his website, and I remember spending hours upon hours upon hours of the day with my dial-up connection going through every square inch of that website. That site was so chock full of information, and you know, it continues to be so today in its WeirdAl.com incarnation. Wow, so I was only five years old when the site first launched. Now the history is it launched on Earthlink and then it shortly after moved to loop.com slash tilde bermuda slash index dot htm. And that address is what appears in the Bad Hair Day album liner notes. Yeah, that address is the funk now, but later on October 23rd, 1997, it moved over to weirdal.com where it still can be found today. From all of us here at David Ethan's 2000s Weird Al podcast, happy anniversary to one of our favorite websites. Now to check out the full history, including a shout out to our very own Dave Elvis Rossi and screenshots of the website evolution over the years, you can head over to weirdal.com, click on archive, then miscellaneous, then about this site. All right, now it's time to check out what's happening in Ethan Christian and the eligible spatulers related news. Oh, hey Ethan, how was your gig last weekend? Well, Dave, before I talk about that, you must tell me how it went with alphabetizing your belly button lint collection. I've been wondering about that all week. I thought you would never ask. Well, you know how I was having trouble assigning a letter to that particularly stretchy piece of lint? Well, you know what? I finally figured it out. And, you know, it only took a few hours, a few microscopes, but I was able to resolve it. Well, before I go on, please, Ethan, I insist. How was that show? Well, I can positively say that it happened and we had a nice time, Dave. So after our set, former podcast sponsor and current friend of the podcast, Don Furlazo, did his music set. So he mostly covered songs from the 90s, but he also included two Weird Al song covers. He played Melanie and that Frank's 2000-inch TV song. And then Christian Sands, Ethan and the Eligible Spatulers, performed and we just all together had a great time. Well, I'm so glad to hear you all had a great time. Now, I got to tell you a little bit more about what I found out about alphabetizing belly button lint. So, you know that one that was kind of sticky? Well, Let me just mute that- Dave and... This episode is brought to you in part by Vegan Burrito Restaurant, Burrito Burrito in True, New York, home of the two-pound double wrapped in a quesadilla, Burrito Burrito, and Wizard Burger in Albany, New York. Come on down to Burrito Burrito and Burrito Burrito, your Burrito Burrito, or hop on over to Wizard Burger for mouthwatering loaded, dare I say, beefy vegan burgers. From Troy to Albany to Uranus, Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger feed the hungry with out-of-this-world, plant-based, real food, always vegan style. Visit BurritoSquare.com and WizardBurger.com to order ahead. You know, and that is exactly when I found out that each one of them have a unique smell and a unique flavor. Well, that's very interesting, Dave. Thank you for sharing that extra information with us. Now, finally, in Weird Al-related news, last week, at Disney Parks on Twitter, tweeted out some new menu items for the Skipper Canteen restaurant in the Magic Kingdom. Among these items are included... Irrawaddy Irma's Hanger Steak, Baba Lamp Chops, Enchanted Orange Dream, but most notably, Skipper Dan's Dan Dan Noodles. Oh, that is awesome. Hold on. I, I got to text Jackson Scoggins and wake them up from their slumber in a hotel conference room closet. Oh, this news is just too exciting for someone who loves Weird Al and Disney and the Jungle Cruise ride. Hold on. Let me just text Jackson. Okay. Great idea, Ethan. Now, how cool. There is no way that was not a reference to Weird Al's song Skipper Dan on Disney's part. I guess that means that Disney's just like us. They love the song. All right, Ethan, with all that news out of the way, let's move on to our 347 Spatula Hotline messages. The 347 Spatula Hotline, the official hotline of David Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast. All right, let's hear the first one, intern Frank. Um, hello? Hi, this is Jackson Scoggins. Uh, I just got a breaking news report, headline news report, unofficial, from uh, from Ethan Ullman of David Ethan's 2000 and podcast. There looks to, there seems to be a new uh, menu item at Jungle Navigation Company, LTD, <laughs> um, Skipper Canteen over at the Magic Kingdom. 
a great a great restaurant. I've been there twice um, on my two last trips to the Magic Kingdom. We have Skipper Dan's Dan Dan Noodles. Wow, those look really good. I I'm gonna have to try. I'm gonna have to go to the parks here soon. What I normally get is the tastes like chicken because it is. Um, but it looks like I'm going to have to change up my order next time I make it to the Magic Kingdom. This is your resident time travel expert and Disney Parks aficionado, Jackson Scoggins, signing out. How did Jackson call in so fast? I just texted them. All right, Jackson, we expect a full review once you finally get around to trying Skipper Dan's Dan Dan Noodles. All right, Frank, let's hear this one. Yeah, I just wanted to share a fun experience that happened to me at the recent L.A. shows. And it goes back to about five years ago. I was living in Chicago at the time, and I was selling a homemade comic book of mine at the Chicago Zine Fest. And at my table, I had a couple other random pieces of art that I was selling. One of them was a portrait of Weird Al, sort of him standing in the Weird Al show set by that crazy eyeball chair he had. And I remember I sold it to what appeared to be a father and son. I remember the dad kind of saw it first, got the son's attention, and the son said he wanted it. Dad handed him some cash, and away they went. And uh, I thought it was so cool. I thought, oh, it's going to go on this kid's wall who's clearly a big Weird Al fan. And you know the stuff you hang on your childhood wall. It's just so memorable. It becomes iconic to you. So selling that piece to them was, was a big, memorable moment to me. Now, five years later... I've moved from Chicago to Los Angeles. I'm at night two of the L.A. shows. Naturally, I went to both, but this is night two, and I spot these two guys, and the kid is older, obviously, but they look so similar. I thought, well, it's 2,000 miles away, but it is a Weird Al show. These have got to be those same guys. So I went up and asked, hey, did you guys buy a painting of Weird Al five years ago at the Chicago Zine Fest? And they said, yes, they did. I was like, oh, I'm the guy that painted that. They're like, oh, yeah, we still have it, still hanging on his wall. Um, We exchanged email addresses, and they sent me a picture of it on his wall. And it was just all around very good vibes experience from top to bottom. Just Al fans talking to other Al fans, and I was just kind of marveling at the the amount of positivity that a tour like this puts out in the world. So thanks to Al, thank you to the band, to Dave and Ethan, and to all the fans, of course. Oh, Jake from Los Angeles, thanks for the call. What an incredible story. How awesome it is to run into Weird Al fans all those years later, 2,000 miles away. That's pretty stinking majestic. That just proves that the Weird Al fan community is pretty stinking majestic. I I love that story. Jake, you should definitely post a picture of your painting over in our Facebook group, group group.2000inch.com. I would love to check that out. Ooh, it sounds like we have another message on the 347 Spatula Hotline. All right, intern Frank, let's hear this one. Dave and Ethan, Ajax here. Hey, I just wanted to leave a message real quick to thank you so much for these bonus episodes. I've really been enjoying them thoroughly with the red rum to goodies and the Coke Zeros and the toenail clippings. I especially love the treats at the end. If your listeners aren't listening to the whole podcast, the very last bit, the treat at the end, it's really worth it waiting for but i noticed something that i wanted to bring up next year will be the 40th anniversary of the debut album you don't think you don't think he's planning some kind of 40th anniversary tour do you that would be pretty stinking majestic you know the the whole thing with the uh the kids today they love the anniversary tours the bands the artists they've been doing a lot of anniversary tours where they play an album the whole thing the full-length album and then some hits to close it out so what do, you, what do you say? What do you think about that? Anyway, keep it weird, and thanks for being you. Well, I definitely wasn't thinking of a 40th anniversary tour, but now I am. What a great idea. I love that. Thanks for calling yet again, Ajax, with yet another great call. I've seen There Might Be Giants do album shows where they sort of mix it up and play the songs in random order. I've seen them do it where they just play the songs in album order, and I've also heard them do it in reverse order. Dave, what would you want to hear Al do with the first album? Well, I would love to see Weird Al play the album in order, and then play it again in random order, and then play it for a third time in reverse order. (laughs) I love that idea. Wow, we sure have a lot of calls on the 347 Spatula Hotline this time. All right, intern Frank, let's hear this one. Hi, guys. It's Jackson, time traveler extraordinaire and founder of Discover Darwin. I was calling 
because I have a bit of a dilemma. Wizard Burger and Burrito Burrito are two separate entities getting to pay the same sponsorship fee for the podcast. Now, my question is whether I could possibly throw in Discover Dassel for six weeks. Because, I mean, if Wizard Burger gets to do it, Burrito Burrito gets to do it, why can't I? So, uh, if you could just, you know, do six weeks worth of ads on Dassel, Minnesota, I'd appreciate it. I think that's it. Let me make sure that my money went through this week. Six episodes worth of Discover Dassel? Oh! Yeah, that's crazy. There's no way we could possibly do that. We love Burrito Burrito and Wizard Burger, but the difference is we love Darwin, but we hate Dassel. Yeah, you know, but Jackson does make a good point. They are a sponsor, and I guess we should at least entertain their idea. (sighs) Okay. All right. Starting this episode, and for a total of six episodes... We'll talk about Dassel. Well, thank you for the call, Jackson. Ethan and I just want to take a moment to thank everybody who calls in and leaves messages on the 347 Spatula Hotline. We get a lot of messages, and not every single one can be played on an episode of the podcast, but we do want to let you know that we listen to all of them, and we love hearing them, and we totally appreciate everyone that calls in. So you folks are pretty stinking majestic. We love the calls. Keep them coming. All right. I think we are finally done with the 347 spatula calls this episode, so I guess we should kind of wrap things up. Cheers to that. Oh, no. Oops. Ah. No. <laughs> Make it stop, make it stop, make it stop! Make what stop? I didn't do anything! This is a test of the 347 Spatula Hotline. This is only a test. If this had been an actual voicemail message, you would have just heard a pretty stinking majestic quip, story, or observation related to Weird Al Yankovic and or this podcast, followed by official information, news, or instructions. This concludes the 347 Spatula Hotline Test. What the fudsicle was that, Frank? You idiot! You buffoon! What a maroon! What a jerk! You no good scum sucking nose picking boot licking sniveling groveling worthless hunk of of intern well guys if if you would just you know give me a chance to explain well sure you can explain but there will be an additional charge of course since we are technically giving your intern skills free exposure on this podcast right right of course uh, i apologize but i was testing the 347 spatula hotline last night The Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission recently brought to my attention that we were in violation of Regulation 372-5806. That test was never intended to be broadcast, but once again, it appears that you knocked over your diet chocolate soda on the control board. Wait a minute, Frank! I thought you were at your cousin Francois's wedding last night. Yeah, weren't you his best man? I mean, les garçons d'honneur. I am. I I mean, I was. I mean, look, this is just way more important. I didn't want to jeopardize the future of this podcast. If we remained out of compliance, there would have been a $1,832 fine. You would have lost your jobs. It would have been a legal nightmare. You would have been locked up in court proceedings for years. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police would have busted down your doors. How could I have ever lived with myself if that had happened to you guys under my watch? It would have been horrible. Yo, calm down, Frank. You need to gill and chill out. How could you be so selfish thinking about yourself at a time like this? I have an idea. Let's find Frank the $1,832 that he saved us from having to pay. Yeah, that'll teach him for making such a minor mistake. Well, technically, I mean, Ethan was the one who- I don't want to hear it, Frank! You're already in enough trouble as it is! Why do we even let him pay us, Ethan? Sometimes I just really don't know, Dave. Well, I guess we should finally get this ridiculous Discover Dassel ad out of the way. You're right. (sighs) 
This episode is brought to you in part by Discover Dassel, promoting tourism in Dassel, Minnesota. Not only is historic Dassel, Minnesota uh, a town, it's also conveniently located next to Darwin, Minnesota. Due to recent uh, changes, this ad will now also cover the wonders of Dassel, Minnesota. Yeah, wow, awesome. I uh, totally don't hate Dassel, Minnesota with every fiber of my being. Yeah, me either. The map of Dassel is definitely, definitely not lining the hamster cages here at Dave Nathan's 2008 Weird Al podcast studio, so don't even bother checking. All right, well, here's some great things about Dassel, Minnesota. <laughs> great things. Yeah, go on, Ethan. Great things about Das. All right, go on. Uh, no, no, no. It's it's your your turn to speak, Dave. Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, uh, Dassel is das Dassel is near Darwin, Minnesota. We already said that. Oh, okay. Well, uh, if you rearrange the letters in Dassel, it spells lead ass. Doesn't get much better than that. So visit Dassel, Minnesota on your next expedition, you know, if you must. And after you visit Dassel, Minnesota, eh, we're obligated to mention that discoverdassel.biz is also a website. This is a special hamster alert to the Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast broadcast alert system sponsored by Jack Bateman. Ooh, let's take a look at the Wikipedia entry for hamsters. Ooh, great idea. Well, just pick a section at random and we'll let the learning begin. Okay, it says, The female's reproductive life lasts about 18 months, but male hamsters remain fertile much longer. Um, maybe there's like a different part we could read? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. All right, so here it says, let's see, oh, here it says, Females are in estrus about every four days, which is indicated by reddening of the genital areas, a musky smell, and a hissing, squeaking vocalization. Uh, well, um, what if we just read about, like, their diets or whatever? Oh, sure, sure, okay. Oh, okay, get this. Male hamsters typically have very large testes in relation to their body size. All right, well, I suppose that's it for this week. That is all for this episode's very special, important hamster alert via the Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast broadcast alert system. Dave and Ethan's 2000-inch Weird Al podcast is brought to you absolutely free thanks to our incredible sponsors, Burrito Burrito, Jackson Scoggins, Jack Bateman, and the less than incredible Discover Dassel. Our podcast is also supported by everyone else in our Patreon family, with special thanks to our amazing close personal friend level Patreon supporters, Matthew, Mike, Rim Gems, Jared and Rocky, Javier, Nancy, NES Josh 64, Gus and Alicia, Jake, UH Jeff, Kenneth, Scott, Zeb, Adriana, Allison, Blair, and also thanks to Vicky DeVries, Rhymes with Cheese, and everyone else in our pretty stinking majestic Patreon family. If you enjoy our family-friendly Weird Al podcast, please consider supporting us at patreon.com slash 2000inch. There are awesome, awesome benefits like getting your name on the podcast, your very own private RSS feed, and access to our secret episodes. And now would be a really good time to join if you have not already, because you'll be the first to hear our content review bonus episode series. And don't forget to check out our official merchandise over at shop.2000inch.com. I mean, why even do laundry every week? Just keep ordering new clothing with our logo on it to wear, and then you throw it out and do it again. I mean, why not? We love hearing from our listeners and other Weird Al fans, so be sure to join our Facebook community over at group.2000inch.com and visit our Discord server for even more riveting Weird Al and Red Rump the Goody related conversations. You can find both of them linked on our website, as well as information about past episodes and past guests over at weirdalpodcast.com or 2000inch.com. And while you're there, click on ridiculously self-indulgent bonus episodes to follow along with our adventures on tour, or black and white and weird all over bonus episodes for our special series where author John Bermuda Schwartz walks us through his first book page by page and picture by picture. Keep up on new episodes, podcast news, and events by following at 2000inch on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And thank you for subscribing and leaving reviews on your favorite podcast app. 
make sure you are subscribed because not only does it help the podcast, it tastes just like chicken. And also remember, we love it when we receive voicemail via our official patent pending 27 hour a day podcast hotline. If you haven't heard it enough, that number is 347 spatula. Give it a call and you might even hear a message in a future episode. We want to give a big thank you to everyone who made this episode possible. Ajax, Jackson Scoggins, Johnny O'Hearn, Mike Minnick, Jeremy Samples, Jake from LA, Alex from Hannaford Parking Lot, and from all of us here at Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, a huge congratulations to John and Julie Katz. Thank you to the Grammy Award-winning Jim Kimo West for our incredible podcast theme song, and thank you to Weird Al Yankovic, as this podcast probably would not exist without him. And a big thanks to all of you, our loyal listeners, subscribers, Patreon supporters and sponsors, and everyone else who makes our podcast possible. Thank you for choosing Dave and Ethan's 2008 Weird Al Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and until next time, remember to gill and chill. Hey, Ethan, earlier, what was Frank going on about? Oh, Nothing. Uh, you know, just how he messed up and hit the wrong button. Are you sure? I mean, it really sounded like you knocked over something. Play the music! That was Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast, episode 169 Inch. Dave and Ethan's 2000 Inch Weird Al Podcast is not responsible for any lasting trauma sustained from hearing Frank's speak on this episode. If your listeners aren't listening to the whole podcast, the very last bit, the treat at the end, it's really worth waiting for.